Okay, so good evening everybody. Welcome to this uh, Ambit Intelligence uh, course and journey through the course. Um, let me spend some time in the first uh, class uh, to explain how the course is organized, which are the objectives, and how we will work together uh, in this uh, semester, actually. Hmm? Very long semester it will be. So uh, you already know, because we already shared this information well, about the course, uh, the code, and uh, all the stuff like that. Uh, and uh, I, ho I imagine you already have a tattoo with the name uh, of the web page where all the information related to the course uh, has been published and will be published during the, the different weeks. So if you have to remember one thing, remember this one. And that points to the web page where all the uh, all the information that you need uh, is uh, is published. Mm -hmm. So we'll uh, we'll spend some some time later in looking through the to the main section of the the page. But uh, uh, this okay, not now. They say. Uh, Anyway, you will find all the information, uh, information that you need, the slides, uh, links, uh, and uh, the schedule of the classes, uh, so that you can plan uh, on, the, on attending the class or the labs. Uh, we'll see in more detail the, the time. So, but before going to the details, uh, let's talk about the goals we had in mind when we designed uh, this course. Uh, the idea is that uh, we want to learn how to de design environments uh, that enrich user experience, let's say. So some environment, some room, some location, some place that uh, makes me enjoy more or better or live better or do something better because the environment interacts with me and improves my experience of, of work, of, uh, of living, uh, or whatever I'm doing in that moment. And uh, that is the goal, I said, the technical goal. Will we use this goal as a, uh, a steering point for learning a lot of uh, technologies, for learning uh, work methodologies, for learning standards, languages, uh, and mainly methods, uh, methods for working and to get into the results. Uh, you will do that, actually, because every, every one of you will create their own ambient intelligence system uh, during the course of the semester. And uh, so we will learn to design something starting from the features that it has. Uh, uh, it will be hard at the beginning to think about what the system will do for the users instead of thinking about the technology that the system will embody, that we'll need to run. Uh, but we, we need to work starting from the users, starting from the user requirements, from the features that the system, that the environment offers to the users, and then only later, in the second moment, uh, decide which, which technology to use. So one, one of the main focus or, uh, say, constant reminders that we will give you to the, throughout the course is uh, introducing technology information only right at the right moment. And it's something that translates also to many other different domains, you know, learning how to, let's say, in incrementally uh, design a system. Uh, we also will work by trying to exploit and integrate existing systems. Okay, the wheel is already being invented, so we, if we need a wheel, we just use that, those ones that are already provided. We don't invent them again. Uh, and so it's another uh, mistake that we engineers often do trying to rebuild something or trying to re, uh, redesign a device that is already existing. In this course, we will, and 
a lot of uh, technology-oriented courses will teach you that. I already teach you how to do this, how to create a board, a computer-based system that does something. We are on the other side here. We try to work at the application level. Given all the technology that is out there that does something, how to put them together to create something useful for the users, to create a user experience, to create a system, to create an environment that surrounds the user and interacts with them. So uh, it's a bit of uh, shuffling and shifting and uh, turning upside down the knowledge that you have and reusing them in a different way. And the, the final result will be a, a concrete, specific uh, system. We want to really build a working ambient intelligence system. Working, maybe simple, maybe working only on that day of the exam or uh, with a lot of limitations, but we want to see it working and we want to integrate devices, integrate the users and see how they interact and how they behave. So um, for doing that, you will work in teams together to get the, to this result. So we are all focused for all the semester long into this main goal, having this uh, syst working system designed by taking in mind uh, the needs and the features required by the users. Uh, we will spend more time later on the definition of uh, ambient intelligence. We will, uh, say, read these sentences, uh, mm, let's say, uh, identify the meaning of the different words uh, in order to understand what, is, what are the implications, what are the characteristics of the system for us. Uh, let me just uh, read the first three lines uh, just to understand what we want to achieve. An ambient intelligence system, which is our goal at the end of the course, is a digital environment, okay, electronics and informatics and sensors and motors and lights, everything uh, connected together that proactively but sensibly supports people in their daily lives. Okay, so which is the most important word in this definition? People. We, want, uh, we have people as our targets. We want to support them and support them in different kinds of activities in their daily lives. Maybe they're in their sleeping, they're working, they're running, whatever. And uh, the system must support these people, so make their job easier, better, funnier, or uh, pick an objective. And the system should support the, the, the people that these true objectives that are very dis disruptive, <laughs> make the, the job very much more difficult, proactively but sensibly. What does it mean proactively? Well, proactively means uh, in advance. So the system should support the people even before they do something for it, even before they know it, maybe. It's not uh, a, a lot of uh, computer systems are reactive systems. I push a button. The system reacts and will do exceptional jobs. But as a response, as a reaction of a request that comes from the user. And an ambient intelligence system is intelligent if it can detect, in, if can, it can, uh, sorry, if it can detect the need of the user without the user taking action and be proactive, propose something. Of course. Yes, the proactive system is like a very um, invasive friend that every time wants to do something with you. No? And you don't want that. You don't want a friend like that. You want a sensible friend that knows when it's, uh, the, uh, when it's worth to interrupt you, to propose you something, and when it's worth just to back off. Hmm? Uh, so imagine you, a very simple example, you install a, an energy saving system in your house that proactively will switch the lights off for you. So you don't need to remember. Uh, the problem is that every time you go in, house, in your house, you light switch on, the system will shut it off immediately because you want to save. 
No, so it's a proactive but not very sensible behavior because something against the user will. Hmm? So the combination of a system that does something in advance, proposes something, and the system that doesn't step into the user willingness uh, is very difficult to achieve. Hmm? And this is the, where the complexity comes out. Because in the end, uh, we have a very rigid system, which is a, a digital system, a software and hardware, that needs to interact with people, hmm? and which is very bad uh, behaviors and moods uh, and, uh, and habits. OK, so this is the, uh, the kind of system that we are targeting. Interacting with the people in intelligent ways through a lot of uh, technology. For getting to this result, we, we put together, we need some, say, information, some, some knowledge in the course. And these are the main topics that we will go through during these uh, 14 weeks uh, that we have had of us. And uh, uh, we will spend uh, the first day, actually, by working on the definition of ambient intelligence, so uh, understanding better what are the characteristics of the system that we want to build, hmm? which is something more than wearable devices, something more than mobile systems, something more than cloud systems, uh, but the conjunction of, of all of these uh, uh, things. Hmm? And, uh, uh, and in the next weeks, uh, we will uh, explore a design methodology. So we'll propose you, and we will enforce also during the course, uh, a way of working. So doing the things in the right order in order to, um, to avoid being uh, too much focused on the technology and too less on the users. Hmm? Um, and uh, so this will be the, the main path. Uh, imagine a system, an ambitious system, and deploy a, a methodology, a method of work, to get to the, to, to build the system, to get to, get to the result. Uh, along the way, we will have to learn specific technologies, something about programming languages, something about user interfaces, something about, about mobile systems, something about uh, uh, interacting with sensors, something about interacting with actuators, and so on. So, uh, we will give you the um, necessary information no, for working with these systems and components um, along the, the different week, uh, weeks, and, uh, and especially in our lab work uh, where we, are, we will build and do exercises on different pieces of the system. Um, and we will learn, uh, basically, we want to we don't want to create a product, huh? something which is finished and self-contained and ready for marketing. We only need to create, realize a prototype, a prototype with some hardware components and with some software components. Hmm? So uh, we also learn how, what are the, the tools uh, huh? and, the, and the, um, the platforms and languages for doing some rapid developments. So with the choice of hardware and software environments uh, are mainly focused on uh, uh, getting a prototype. And then, of course, uh, a, lot of the, or a lot of your time hmm, will be invested in uh, group work. So working together, um, sometimes supervised, so with the teachers that will help you and oversee your work, and uh, sometimes free, working by yourself uh, towards your project. Hmm? So actually, uh, in, the, in this course, we want to mix uh, some technology information, but this is not a technology course. It's an integration course. We need to learn some technologies in order to support the development of our system. There will be practical work. Uh, we, will need, we, we will not write or study a lot of uh, books or write longer texts or something. Uh, mainly creating and getting something to work. And uh, trying to also think about the, the, the theoretical and research aspects, uh, we are trying to build here something new. Uh, we will, you will not copy anything that, will, uh, that already exists. Uh, the the constraints that we put on your work uh, will enforce you to think about something new that doesn't exist. Uh, and to create something new, we, you need to know what is already existing there, out there. So you need to actually position your idea in the in the, the actual products, hmm? so let's do also a bit of innovation here. 
Um, so actually, we will have to learn uh, to work with a mix of these different levels. Sometimes we'll do exercises in programming languages, and the other time we will, we will try to evaluate uh, a project idea according to, to different criteria. Hmm? So this is just, uh, uh, it's, there's a lot of work uh, to do together. And uh, according to the methodology uh, that we have forged during the course. Actually, the end result always uh, is always is very clear you now, building the working solution. So, how do we work in, practi in practice? Hmm? Uh, the core in this course we have three teachers. Hmm? Uh, I am the first one listed here, and Fulvio, and the other two are standing there in the back. So the guy on the right uh, is Luigi. Say hello. <laughs> yeah. And the other is Theo. And uh, we will, uh, uh, say, share this uh, classroom and share the, the hours in the lab uh, along, along the semester. OK? So um, you say so you've seen the faces. Uh, you don't, uh, you, so that we, you, you can recognize us uh, when, you, we, when you see us uh, in the labs. Uh, Especially uh, in the classroom, it's easier to, to understand who is the teacher, but in the lab, we are all mixed. Uh, so, that, uh, um, so with these th three persons, in many times, uh, we will work together. So there's a lecture, there's a class, or even one teacher is speaking, but in the labs, uh, many times, you, you will see more than one of us uh, working together with you, especially you know, interacting on the project and so on. The schedule. Uh, you already know that because you didn't meet this, uh, the room. The only issue is that uh, uh, so this is the the outer envelope of the schedule. So we have uh, four slots, uh, two on the Monday and two on Thursdays. We won't use all of them every week. Okay, in some week we will use uh, four slots, in some others only three, in some others only two. And we'll explain you the, the, the rationale, the, the the reason in a second. On Monday, sometimes we will be in the classroom, and sometimes we will be in the lab. Do you all know where the LADISPE is, lab? Uh, LADISPE is uh, right uh, behind the room number 12, okay, on the ground floor after room number 12. Um, so I mean, sometimes we'll be here, and sometimes we'll be in, uh, in LADISPE, depending on the week, depending on the topic. So it's a, it's a flexible uh, uh, schedule, and if, if, Yes, it's working now. Uh, we, ha we already have on the website a section called log, with the log of the activities, where, where we already published the expected schedules of the course, all through. So we already have a plan for surviving until the end of the semester, day by day. And so you can see, whenever you see this uh, EL, means uh, Esercitazione in laboratorio, exercise in laboratory. EL, it means that this class will be in La Dispe. When you see L, L so lecture, uh, means uh, in class. Okay, so you, you can check the log and see that the next time, the first time you go to the lab will be next Monday, the 7th of March, and then we'll go again the next Monday, and so on. So from the schedule, you see the topics, and you see where we expand. You, also, you will also see that this Thursday, we are good persons. So in the first week, we will give only three classes instead of four. So you can, you can relax at the beginning. But then at the, in the week after, you, we already have uh, two, three, four um, classes uh, in the week. Hmm? So every week, we change a bit uh, according to the topics. Just don't get lost. Uh, uh, if we need to change something, we will send you uh, some, some, some notice, and we'll update uh, this page. Um, the lab actually is the place where you will build your project. So it's actually the, the most important part of the work. Uh, we will uh, say have more or less half of the time in the lab devoted to exercise. Normal lab exercise, we give you the text you need in, the, in that hour to develop something. And uh, the rest of the time uh, will be for you to work on your project. 
Okay? So there will be a point in time in which everybody will work on different things because the, the projects have been decided and uh, the lab will be for supporting you in the development. So you can work on your own by night at home or whatever, but uh, uh, every week or so you can also come to the lab and uh, check the work with us if you have any problem, issues or solutions or ideas or whatever. Hmm? The lab will be also the place where we have the exams, where we will take the exams. So we, during the exam, you will need to show your work, your project in the LADISP lab. Uh, as I said, the schedule of the classes is a bit skewed, it's strange, it's not very straight. Uh, every week is different from every other week. The idea is that at the beginning of the course, we need to give you more information. We need to explain you about technologies and uh, you know, uh, learn some new things. So we will spend more time, two, three classes a week, uh, for, uh, for classes, hmm? and also do exercises in lab quite frequently. Uh, as we progress with the time, we will reduce gradually the number of classes. You can see that after 60% of the course, we will give no further classes. Huh? And you will have all the time for working on your project. Uh, so the idea is that at the beginning we give you the information for working on the project. Uh, we try to concentrate that at the beginning. At the beginning we will have many more hours here in classroom. And, uh, uh, and after that, uh, and in parallel, you will start thinking about the project. When the project has been defined, uh, we will try to uh, reduce or go to zero with the number of uh, classes so that you can spend all the time. So it doesn't mean that the course will get lighter in the last weeks. It only means that the classes will get lighter, will disappear. But the, the same time, or actually more time, that you invested in the, say, in the classes before, you need to invest it in the project. So we'll free you time for finishing the project, uh, hopefully in time. Um, so that's why we have this schedule that is different every week. Okay, some words about you. You know that I sent a survey some weeks ago for um, asking you some information to, to understand what is your background mainly. And these are some statistics. Uh, actually, you are 68 persons enrolled in the course. Yesterday you were 66, so two only came up in the last day. Uh, the majority of people is uh, from computer science and electronics, which is expected, actually. Um, so it's 27 plus 16 is more than half of them, of you. Then there is a good group of people that come from the architecture domain. So I see six persons enrolled in architecture and one in uh, industrial design, seven people. Okay, do you want to show up? Okay, only some of them, no problem. And uh, um, some from the mechanical, I see three and one, four persons from the mechanical sector, mechanical engineers, is anyone out here? One. And uh, some other people from different backgrounds. Uh, okay, these two are still in the informatic sector because are the electronic and computer engineering. Two from management, uh, two from, from physics, uh, telecommunication, civil engineering, and something like that. Hmm? And single person. So it's good because we want, we need. Uh, to create projects that take into account several aspects of the person. Yeah? You don't know what to program? No. You say, no. Okay. We know that. I, I, I'm trying to answer that. So, uh, there are different skills here. Okay? You know that the, a system must be designed must be built, must be executed, must uh, um, take into account the needs of the persons, as, as we said at the beginning. Hmm? 
So what we are also trying to do here is to create teams that combine different skills and different disciplines. So somebody might be is more used to work on the relationship between objects and people. I think about architecture and design, uh, about the shapes, about the, um, the design of objects, and some other people will be maybe uh, more toward the, the, the electronics or the computer science. So what we, we I have some guidelines later, but what we suggest you is try to mix the different skills in the groups. Okay. Don't make a group of architects because you will not finish the work in any way. You cannot le learn everything you, know, you need. Now, you try. You need to to mix the different. Uh, I, know, I have nothing against the architects, but just to uh, the, the, to reach the goal, hmm? trying to mix and to exploit the competence. I think I, ju I just make a random examples. Now, in the last years, maybe some people were coming from mechanical or civil engineering trying very hard to learn to program. And it's good. I love it because I love computer science. But they didn't bring their own civil or mechanical skills into the project. And this is bad because the end result was less than what could have been. It's not easy. It's very easy to say on this side of the, of the, of the desk, but it's not, it's not easy at all to do it really. But let's try to do that. We will also try to guide you in the formation of the groups uh, to avoid, uh, say, critical situation that we can identify quite easily with the experience. OK. And then I ask you, what about your skills? So this is the histogram of the answers. The blue bar is uh, no, nothing at all. Uh, and uh, red and green and yellow go towards higher numbers. So. While you go left, uh, while you go right, uh, you have a, a increasing confidence in your skills. So, programming in general is quite covered. I say there's some people that say no, I don't know anything. Some four people and uh, some ten people that say oh, okay, it's very hard for me. I know only a bit, but the the majority you know, is confident with that. And they I ask other questions that are basically the same questions, that the same topics that we need to cover in this course. So somebody probably learned a bit of web architectures, a bit here, but uh, maybe on their own. But for the other topics, uh, the, 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 the big bar, the dominant bar, is the blue one, meaning, meaning we don't know anything about that. Hmm? OK. Mm, it was expected, uh, just uh, confirm it. it this uh, chart has the same, same shape this year as compared to last year, so it's not a surprise for us. Uh, and more in detail about the programming languages, we see that many of you have been uh, uh, enjoy with the C language from the, from the first year. Some C++, some assembler, but, and basically nothing already or not, not very much about the other languages. Uh, there is one language that is uh, more uh, unknown to most of you, Python, and this is the language that we'll use in, the, in this. Uh, so everybody is, is leveled on this one, but OK, it's, just, it's a joke. But actually, we will use Python because it's very fast for programming prototypes. Uh, and it's uh, quite easy to learn both coming from other languages and also starting from, from, from zero, actually. It's very simple compared to, to C, for example. Hmm? Um, and my message is, uh, don't worry. This, this is the same situation. Uh, can somebody close the door, please? Thank you. Because um, it's a lot of noise. And I already have a lot of noise in my head. So. Uh, this is the, was the picture last year. More or less, the, the, um, these answers were the same, were very similar. And so this percentage is another way of presenting the same data. But what I want you to look at is the, the last column. <clears throat> Out of 14 projects that we had at the end of the course, how many projects actually used and so were able to, to, um, to know and to exploit any given technology? And you see that in many cases, most of the projects could use, actually used, 
most of the knowledge and languages and technologies that you don't know today. So it's feasible. We can get there. Don't be too afraid or too scared because you don't know Python or you don't know anything about web uh, architecture or something like that. It can be done. It has already been done. So we are here to, to push you to do that. Um, about team working, you know that we in, in this course we, we work in teams. Uh, um, there's good experience from most of you uh, having already worked. And uh, the, the ideal number of people per group uh, that you say is something around three or three point something. Mm -hmm. uh, we will probably organize uh, the groups in f or groups of four projects uh, with groups of four people, three slash four people, depending on uh, on, um, uh, on, on, on Randolph's, uh, say, uh, of, of, of persons. But main, it's better um, to work in four because of the different skills and of the amount of work that is needed. Uh, so if the team is a bit bigger, it's also more reliant uh, to problems that may arise. Hmm? OK. Uh, about. Uh, Information or resources, I already mentioned the website that actually, I don't want to, to detail everything, it all, contains all the information that you need. Uh, <coughs> we don't need, we, sorry, we don't use the Portale della Didattica for sharing material. We publish everything on that website that is accessible also without any password for everybody. And uh, except for the uh, video recordings of the lectures, uh, the, the, the camera that is recording these classes, that are published by the Polytechnico directly on the portal of the didactica. So you need to go to the portal if you need to, to download or to watch the videos of the lectures, and everything else is on this website. Um, and additionally, we will use, uh, let's say, social media or whatever you want to call them also to ease the interaction and especially, you know, I already sent you, spammed you the link uh, a couple of times. Uh, we use the, this Facebook, Facebook page mainly to maybe share information, uh, the last minute uh, news or something like that. So it's very, uh, it's, it's easier for, for us to write and for you to read than maybe an email sent through the portal. Also, feel free to ask questions, to share information in this group is for the course, for supporting the course. So any topic that is related to the course or is related to the ambient intelligence in general is acceptable in this group. Mm -hmm. So if it can become more of a conversation, it's better for everybody. OK. Um, we don't have any textbook to, textbooks to, to suggest you. Uh, because the topic, oh, we would have too many, <laughs> to be honest. Maybe at the beginning of every topic, we can, we can show you some pointers. Usually, at the end of most of the chap slide chapters, uh, we have a slide that is called the resources, with a list of links uh, or articles or websites or books uh, that are relevant for that specific topic. So it's something that if you want to dig far into some topic, we will have the reference uh, at the end of every slide set, actually. Um, but uh, you know, a lot of topics, and uh, for every topic there will be different references. So we, we, we don't want, and you, it's not uh, worth build, buying or relying on, uh, on 12 books uh, for, for one course. So we'll try to provide you f with the basic information to start, and then the internet is your friend. Okay. Uh, all the information, all these languages, all this framework, all these standards are documented online. Uh, so uh, rely on that, read the documentation, uh, read the product descriptions, and so on. So we actually need to learn to rely on first hand information from the source instead of second hand information uh, like books or, or slides or something like that. Hmm? Um, okay. At the end, we will uh, share the very happy moment of the exam. And in a course like this, where the main goal is to develop a system with some characteristic, 
characteristics, uh, the, the goal of the exam is uh, actually to check whether the system works, exists, works correctly, and whether it has been designed in the right way. Hmm? Uh, so assessing the capability to design and developing the MEI functionalities. Designing in the right way and developing something that works. Um, so uh, the only way to check the result of a work that is mainly a lab work and a design work is to check the, the end result in the lab uh, by, by say, interacting with it. Um, we also have two additional constraints. One is that uh, many of you are close to the graduation of the third year. And so uh, are very, say, they need to close the credits uh, before the date for asking for the graduation exam and stuff like that. So we have a, a, some timing constraints. So many of you want to close this, the courses early. And some of you need to return home to their universities because they are from different, from different countries. So what we want to do is to try to set up a process for which the exam is uh, hopefully given and passed in June. So right at the end of the course. Uh, ideally, at the last week of the course, you will, re you will already have your product, your project, sorry, ready for examination. And this worked quite well uh, also in the last year. So uh, out of uh, maybe 15 projects, only two needed to, say, go to September, to the September exam. And all the others were already examined in June, in June, July, during the summer so that people could go uh, in, on holidays uh, um, with, the, with the exam passed. Hmm? What, do we have, what do we evaluate during the exam? We evaluate, actually, documents, information, the information that is the, the trace of the design process during the course. We will show you the process in a moment. <laughs> with all the times and, the, and deadlines and so on. And during the course, not at the end, not for the exam, but during the course, you, you will produce information. This information will be evaluated at the end. But it's something that you already do hmm, during the different weeks. And uh, a presentation that you give, uh, a 15 minutes presentation that you give during the exam, where you present your final result. Um, and then we will also evaluate uh, the, the demo, no? the demonstration of a, of a system that is working. You need to fo form some work groups at the beginning of the course, propose a topic, and at the beginning of the course, in the first month, say, we work uh, to define the topic of your project. Hmm? So every group will develop uh, one specific uh, topic uh, and will develop it during the course uh, that presented during at, at the exam. So this is uh, the process that we will follow during the course. Today, we we'll start thinking about uh, the general themes, the general topic for the projects. So every year, we have a topic to develop uh, to avoid repeating the same projects. And we start today. You have, uh, you, you have time to think. Think, search, compare, discuss among you, discuss with us, until for two weeks, the 16th of March. At that date, you need to submit your proposal, saying this is our proposed group, person number one, two, three, four, and this is our, the proposed topic for our project. You submit them online. I show you how, and on the day after. Uh, it's uh, Thursday, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm right. Uh, um, we will discuss in classroom your proposals. So we'll say, okay, your idea is good, uh, your idea is weak, try to improve in this aspect, your group is weak, try to join with the other group, and so on. We have a discussion all together about the different ideas, the different topics, and we'll try to, um, let's say, to, to adjust them, to improve them. And in the next day, hopefully, you can uh, say save the final definition of the courses and so on. So in, if everything goes right, on the 18th of March, you will have groups and project topics defined. 
So you can start already thinking about the details, start implementing them. So we need uh, three weeks uh, for, do, for, do this, for doing this. Huh? Mm -hmm. In this week, just don't wait until the last minute. So if you have ideas, if you have, call us, uh, uh, try to discuss among you. If you have any, any doubt, any, any thought, uh, you can share with us uh, so that we can tr start thinking and start refining the ideas before uh, this time in March. Then you can start working on the first step and what we call uh, the vision. So uh, it's like a one-page description of what is the vision for your project. What is, uh, uh, I, I'm using the word of the definition, uh, how you are going to support people with your project in their daily lives. Okay. And uh, it's a, a high-level description of what you want to achieve. And you need to publish them in a website that you will create and that will grow during the course. So this will be the D1, deliverable number one. The first deliverable you have to submit is a website describing the vision of your project. So in the first project proposal, maybe you have three or four lines describing the project idea. In the vision, you maybe have one page or a couple of pages, thinking about uh, actually how it works. We will give you examples of how to do that. You work together on that. And we will give you feedback on that uh, on, the, on a couple of days uh, later. So this is a normal pattern. We have one day in which you have the deadline for submitting a deliverable. There are three of them throughout the course. And then after the deadline, we, need, we, re we revise them, we read them, we check them. And then together, we will give you feedback. Okay, it, it, this is OK, this is not good, you need to improve this, this information is missing, this is wrong, and so on. And they, we will do that in the lab hours. So while you are in the lab working on your project, we'll go through the different groups and give information and discuss the deliverable so that we have the best use of time uh, for everybody. Hmm? So deliverable one, the same goes for deliverable number two, will be the, the user requirements. We will uh, have a list of the, of the requirements for the system, functional requirements, non-functional requirements. We will learn about all this, what this means. And we have a feedback on that uh, the week later, the week after. This, uh, there are more days here because there are a couple of vacations there, the 25th of April and the, second, and the 1st of May. And then the third deliverable is the system architecture. So the second deliverable is what the system does, needs to do, the requirements. And the third is the architecture, what are the components of the system? and how do communicate with each other. And again, we have a feedback on deliverable number three some days out, uh, later. These are the three main deliverables. Then you can work on the project, and uh, after the feedback on these deliverables, uh, we have uh, what we call the final project review. So a short presentation by each group, so five minutes per group, a presentation in the classroom in which everybody now presents their project. At this point, everything essential should already have been decided. We know what, you, what the project does, what results could achieve, and so on. We maybe haven't started the implementation yet, or maybe only on some portions, but it doesn't matter. Now, what's important is that we already we know very clearly where we want to go and what we want to achieve, what technologies, what architecture, and so on. And we give this in a presentation. From this day on, uh, you just have to work on the project. So we don't ask anything more on any other document, deliverables, or whatever until the exam date. So you're free to work and organize your time if you prefer. Uh, you know that you have the chance of uh, being helped in your work in the hours that are marked as a supervised work group in the, in the schedule. And the, the LADISPA lab is also available in many other hours. So you can go there also in other hours that are not the, the schedule of the course. When, it, when it's free, you can always go there and work and work with the, with the equipment. And then, of course, we have the exam, in which you have to present. During the exam, we will evaluate deliverable, again, deliverable numbers one, two, and three. Huh? Maybe we got you some feedback, and we checked whether it's been integrated and so uh, or not. 
and then we want to see the presentation and the demo during the exam date. Uh, this ends the exam, but it doesn't end the story. Uh, you probably know that uh, we want to celebrate uh, the end of the of the course and the, to uh, and the happiness in, the, in having the systems where the prototypes working by organizing a public event uh, that has already been done and uh, has been quite successful in general. Uh, we call the, the, um, the student showcase for ambient intelligence. So in September 2016. We will organize a public event. At the, I don't know if some of you already attended this showcase last year. It's at the I3P, the incubator of the Politecnico, where you can show your project to other students, but mainly also to people from enterprises that will be invited there and we come and see. And, uh, uh, and, and you can uh, show. Huh? Uh, and get in touch with uh, some companies, enterprises, startups, and so on. There were there are also prizes. So last year, the three better project, uh, the three projects that were most voted, uh, won some interesting prizes hmm, for uh, for the for the students actually hmm, in the group. So something that uh, it's uh, once you we do we do all of this work, uh, we can then show them to the people and use that uh, as a say. A presentation event, a curriculum. Most of you, will, or many of you, will be already graduated at the moment, so they could also be ready for um, for talking to, with potential people that uh, that could, could hire you or could work with you. Hmm? So we want also to give you this opportunity of uh, outreach and uh, of uh, uh, say presentation of your work uh, as well. Hmm? So this is actually the state in which we all will be at the end of uh, this long journey. Uh, so it would be very exhausting, but very rewarding, I say. I, I always use these two adjectives uh, for, for the course, both for your side and for our side. And uh, I, can, I can assure that. OK, uh, well, this is very specific information about the exam. I don't know whether it's worth to spend too much time at the first class here. I will get uh, information is there. We'll, go, we'll give more detail uh, as we go as we go near to the exam. Uh, actually, you see, this left, left part is just uh, the information that you produce during the course that will be evaluated. And the right part is uh, what uh, we do during the day of the exam. And the exam will be a presentation, a demonstration, and a discussion. Discussion means that we ask questions about something that we didn't understand or something that we don't think is uh, very correct and so on. And you just uh, present your work. So it's something about your work is not uh, we don't uh, ask questions about let's tell me in this library what is what the name of this function is okay um, and of course the work is presented by the group but during the presentation and during the discussion we want to check the contribution of different people so having having one person in the group that is just stand still and doesn't respond to the question uh, it doesn't it's not very uh, very good for them hmm? So we, we, because this, we need them to give the scores to, to every person in the group. But there are details that we'll describe um, later in, in the, during the end of the course. So the first steps, uh, we said, I didn't tr start thinking about the groups. So maybe some of you already have worked together. Some just are getting to know uh, today. Try to create groups with three, four people, ideally four. And possibly we mix, mix skills, OK? So not all computer engineers, not all electronic engineers, not all architects, not all mechanical, but try to mix them as much as you, pull, as, as you can. And absolutely, possibly we mix the skill, but absolutely try to avoid groups with the dominant part is person which are not able yet to program. And start developing your ideas. We will start today giving you some suggestions, some ideas, but uh, uh, the sooner you start, the better, really. Uh, you, need, you throw in an idea, then it doesn't work right, and then you start the second one, and so on. It's a, it takes time. We only have three weeks to come up with a final and definite project idea. So start tonight. 
not, not with me, I'm among you. Um, don't aim to hide. Uh, on paper, everything is easy and nice. I want to build a system that does this, that, that, that is very ex um, extraordinary and is very intelligent and is very pervasive and there's thousands of sensors and functionalities. Right, great. But then you need to build it. So it's better to start small. Think about the system, which can also be modular in nature. So you're thinking about 50 features, nice, but then you know that if you, for some prob for some reason, you only implement 20 of them, it still makes sense. So it's better to start doing with, with a core of functionality that is manageable, and then if you have time, add some additional functionality. That you maybe already started thinking about that, but you have a very clear plan of getting to the core early, making it work, and then adding stuff, if possible. We don't require you to create uh, something enormous. Something which is very well defined, confined, not very big, but it already has a lot, a lot of complexity because it integrates a lot of different technologies and devices. So the complexity will already be in the, the hardware and software combinations. So don't increase the complexity from the functional point of view just for doing that, just for the fun of, uh, for the fun of doing that. Huh? Try to keep it small. Seeking interaction. Uh, if you have any idea or doubt or question, ask them. Hmm? We are here for that, for that reason. Ask for suggestions and maybe listen to them. <laughs> because what happened many times is that we gave suggestions and people tended maybe to ignore them. Ah, yes, yes, you're right, but I will continue on my way. Okay, you're free. It's your project after all. But uh, if then if, if you got if you get stuck in some uh, in some place because you didn't follow a suggestion, then it's your problem then. Hmm? Uh, suggestion from us or from other people, of course. Hmm? And exploit in the lab hours. Okay. Okay, um, just to give you a flavor of what we did last year. Last year we had a, uh, de uh, we developed a, we the students developed uh, 15 different projects. So there were around uh, I don't remember whether 19 or 20 groups that started, and 15 of these uh, actually finished the the course and the exam. Okay, not everybody. Uh, as I reach the end of, of the course. Uh, last year, we had a team that was the smart campus. So all the projects were around how to make the polytechnical uh, environment smarter. And uh, they, are, they, they proposed different uh, application domains. Some work on the classrooms. Some worked on the study rooms. Some work on the parkings, bikes and cars. Some work on the toilets. And some work on the on the hallways for navigation and so on. So uh, different groups uh, identify different needs inside the polytechnic and try to create a system that could improve those needs. You can see all the details about this group on this web page, where all the projects are listed. This is just uh, an index page, and if you click to uh, to one of these, you go to the website that the group has created for that project. Okay, so it's already online, it's still online, so they created a description, uh, they created a, a video, you will also do that for presenting the, the, the project, uh, and uh, there, will, there should be somewhere also a link to the code. Uh, I don't see it right now, but uh, never mind. This one, so, okay. Uh, for, for downloading the, the source code of the project. So you can spend some time in looking at the project to see so the extent of them. Uh, of course, the topic of this year will be different, so you cannot copy the same projects. Um, the, 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 the good point is that for every group, uh, we had a very, at the beginning, every group has a, had a more or less fuzzy idea, crazy and fuzzy, 
uh, idea, and at the end, they, we, we, we were able to, to shape a working prototype for, for all the, of the topics. And these are a couple of pictures from the showcase last year. So we had 11 projects that were showcased. These were their choice, not mine. So the idea is that we invite to the showcase all the projects that pass the exam. Okay, so if you pass the exam, we'll try to ask you or push you or sorry, uh, stimulate you to participate. And some, uh, in this case, four groups didn't want uh, for different reasons. In one case, the, the group broke up. In another case, the people uh, went from abroad, so they couldn't be in Turin. So there are different reasons. But in most of the cases, 11 groups were presenting and the showcase. What they did is that every, each one of them had a desk like that and the poster behind them. These were are, are the, the small versions of the posters that they, that they hung. Um, and people came and, and visited the different stands, huh? like an affair. And uh, so these are pictures of people going through the different stands. Uh, this is the, the introduction. It will be just a very short introduction just to explain what the event is. And then two hours for groups presenting their work to people. And these visitors are mainly no, there are some students, but you see a lot of gray hairs here. Uh, and these gray hairs, of course, are, they are not students, they are people from enterprises that come and, and want to visit the project. We are also, uh, we had five sponsors, so companies that helped us uh, in organizing the event uh, and in putting the prices, uh, in sponsoring the prices, and also, of course, in, in participating and having discussion with the students. So I think uh, it's a really good opportunity for you to start interacting with the, with the, with the, with, with the world outside the university. Hmm? And the winners were these three projects. So there was a, a voting system. There will be also a voting system next, next year uh, where the visitors could vote the three projects that they preferred. And at the end, the project that got more votes uh, got the prices that they were offered by the sponsors. Just to give you an idea, uh, the, the first prize w w went to this Marco Poli project, uh, which is a, a, a system for navigating inside the Politecnico and uh, avoiding crowded uh, hallways and being guided towards where some where places that where there are some maybe events or promotion of the Barcatia or whatever, hmm? or in the library there's something special today, and so you get informed. Uh, well cleaned is a system about the toilets with a set of sensors that uh, will see when the, um, uh, the materials in the toilets, like the soap or the paper, are running out. Uh, and uh, they show you, OK, don't go to that toilet because it's, uh, it's out of soap. And they will uh, interact with the, with the cleaning staff uh, to, to alert them that something needs to be cleaned or to be changed. And uh, the third one, the, one the, third, the third prize was the My Bike Place. And it's a device for um, parking your bike in the bike lots that are around the Politecnico. And when you park them, uh, you, you have a device that, first, first of all, tells you where there are free spaces. Second, reminds you or where you park your bike. So at the end of the day, you, you, you just don't remember where you put that. And the system will remind you. And will alert you if something is trying. If somebody sorry, is trying to steal your bike, it you moves your bike with the, and when this is not you. So either you, they, they, they steal your phone and your bike together, or otherwise you get a, notice, and you get a, a notification. So these are you see, different domains, different projects. Uh, they all combine sensors. They all combine intelligence. They all combine um, mobile, uh, mobile applications uh, and, um, and interfaces. And uh, we see that uh, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll check uh, these words in a, in a moment. Uh, most of these projects uh, are able to implement these uh, properties of ambient intelligence system. We, I am going to define this in the next uh, uh, 30 minutes. So uh, in different degrees, some are more about the sensing, some are more about the interaction, some are more about the intelligence, because there, there can be different projects. Uh, what we are asking you is that your project should cover as many of these features as possible. OK. So long for the, the general introduction. Are there any, any questions about the organization of the course? 
topic. Anybody wants to leave now? Everybody understands my version of English? OK. You are either dead or fine. OK. And uh, so let's move uh, to the first topic. And then for 15 minutes, uh, uh, maybe let's open the right folder. Then we have a break in the middle. OK, so before think, you're starting to think about what project we want to build, we need to clarify what we mean with ambient intelligence. And we try to start with uh, some definitions, of course, and try to understand the implications of, the de of these definitions. Uh, let's start with a, a technology trend. You recognize most of these boxes. Cloud computing, OK, everybody is using cloud today. Internet, everybody is using internet. Uh, home automation, building automation, smart homes uh, are something that is already of the shell technology. Not very used, very much used, because it's costly, because it doesn't offer many advantages, but it's something that is already existing. Mobile devices, okay, they've become smart devices, more ubiquitous. There are now there's a lot of wearable devices. Technology that you recognize, okay, something that is part of our technology landscape. Today, they're talking about the Internet of Things. So all of these things, your home, your sensor, your watch, your phone, your bike, are talking together through the internet and supported by some cloud computing. This is today's architectures. Okay? And these architectures, this set of technologies are evolving. Uh, some simpler technologies are evolving to more complex ones. And some separate technologies are starting to be linked together. Okay, until yesterday, a smart home and a smart watch were different objects, were separated, with, they didn't need to interact. Now we are starting to think about ambience in which different devices need to share information with each other. This is the trend that we are living today. Uh, all of these are technologies for creating products, for creating solutions. Solutions in the, I call it smart home or smart environment. And uh, from the marketing point of view, from a market point of view, what happens is that many different technologies coming from many different industry sectors are starting to think about uh, smart homes or smart buildings. And so you see that uh, the company that uh, was used to sell uh, refrigerators want to sell you the smart refrigerator. Those who uh, were selling you internet connectivity, they want to sell you the con internet connectivity with a smart box that is able to also to control other stuff in your house. Uh, people who are selling you computers want to uh, control your house or make it smarter. People that are selling you the electric plants in your, in your house, uh, they want to sell uh, uh, smart home electric plants. People that are selling you renewable energies, they say, okay, once you have the controller for the renewable energy, you want to have also smart appliances and smart plugs to control them. So you have a lot of industry sectors that are seeing the smart home or the smart building as an emerging market. This is an opportunity because you have a lot of things coming together in a single application domain. But it's also a problem because every one of these industry sectors have different ways of working, different conceptions about the, the, um, their product and their clients, their customers. Okay? If you think about a consumer electronics company, the people that was, you were used to sell you the, the, the fridge or the air conditioner, 
once you buy it, they don't care about you. If they don't hear from you, it's better because you don't need to go into repairs. So the relationship with you is uh, buy my device, and then I can forget about you. And an internet provider has a very different relationship with the customer. Every month, you have to pay for the service. So there needs to be a, long, a continuity. So the internet operator need, need you not to change. OK, if, uh, when I sell your refrigerator, if the month later, one month later, you buy another one, I don't care. You already paid for the first. Maybe you sell it. I don't care. My profit is already there. If I'm an operator, I want to have a continuity of service because you are paying me little by little, my, my month by month. If you have the, I don't know, the Apple Smart uh, Home Kit or whatever it's called because it's, not, it's, it's, never, it's never appearing, they want you to buy different components that work together and only them work together. So they want to build a relationship with you and this relationship is based on, the, on buying related products and related services. So every one of these people has a different business model. And the users also would have different uh, requirements. So today is not clear what will be the future of smart environments and smart buildings. Who, which of these, uh, say, different industry approaches will win? Will you rent the smart home service every month? Will you buy a set of devices once and for all? And what happens when you buy something today and you want to buy another device in six months? Will they work together? Will they interoperate? Or do you need to stick with the, food, food, uh, with the first brand and you cannot switch brands or providers? So these are, is, these are the main questions from the market point of view, from the industry point of view. Hmm? It's not a technology problem, but when technologies start competing with each other, each one of them brings uh, all the industry sector with them. So we don't know what, uh, what will happen. What we want, what I, kn I know that in this course, I don't want to take the stance of any of these industry sectors. I want to take the stance of the user. So from the user point of view, what do we want? And, and once we understand what we want, then we choose the technology providers that best fit our needs. OK, um, so we want to work at, with the user level and with the application level. Technology is there. Technology industries are fighting to each other, bloodly fighting to each, with each other. We want to exploit whatever comes out from these technologies, whatever um, products survive <laughs> the fight between these industries. And ask ourselves, what kind of applications can we build to serve our users? Not what kind of product, not what kind of device can I sell to a user to make my profit. What kind of application that may involve different kinds of devices, different kinds of technologies, put together and combine in a very unique way for my needs. That is the point of view that we are trying to get. And this is what we call ambient intelligence or intelligent environment, depends on the researchers. They, they, they could never agree about uh, what is the best name for this. Uh, so creating something for the users that exploits technology. This is our point of view. We need to learn about technology because we need to use it. But our main focus is on the application. And. Uh, this, uh, um, as I motivates a bit the definition that we give usually about uh, ambient intelligence. Ambient intelligence is not a new term. Uh, it was already mentioned in a study for the uh, European Commission, sorry, that was published in 2001. Okay? You were so high at the time. Um, and it was already a study of scenarios for ambient intelligence. You can read this document. It's available on the European Commission website. So you just look for the title. 
And you see that most of the scenarios that are described there, these scenarios are people doing things, living their lives with this ambient intelligence surrounding them. Most are reasonable, and most are still future. So after 15 years, uh, we still don't, we still didn't reach those scenarios, but we agree with them. We agree with they would be nice to have. Hmm? Um, so it, the term is not very new. But uh, it has been, uh, say, the subject of a lot of research work, but not much, uh, say, industrial work. Huh? Because every home, every person, every need is different, so it's very difficult to get to the scale of the, to the industrial scale in this sector. But let's come back to the definition. This is the definition that we prefer to use in this course. Huh? A digital environment, and now we start understanding, we are starting to understand better what it means, uh, that support people proactively but sensibly. Uh, this is the definition. We need to understand how, or say, what are the characteristics of a system that has these properties. How can we build a system that could match this definition? Uh, it's easy to give definition. I want something to be high and tall and uh, with, with blue eyes and uh, blonde hair and so on. Okay, but then you need to have it. Uh, and you need to learn, in this case, how to build it. And so we, we will uh, analyze, starting from this definition, we will analyze uh, the main, uh, the, the necessary components that we need to put into the system for it to be uh, good for this definition. This is an alternative definition which is longer, so we don't like it very much because it's longer, but basically it tells the same thing. The action of neural network controllers, it's a, it's a distributed system after, after all, is orchestrated by self-programming preemptive processes. So software, distributed software that needs to orchestrate, so uh, meaning uh, reach to an agreement about what to do in such a way to create an interactive holistic functionality. They are trying to use big words to scare us, but we don't get there so easy. Uh, that enhances occupant experiences. Basically, the, the, the core definition is enhancing occupant experiences through a set of devices that run software then needs to, to reach to a definition, to reach a conclusion. So, and this area uh, implies or includes several other different areas in computer science and electronics. So for building an intelligent environment, you need to have sensors. The computer system needs to know where the user is, what he is doing, uh, where he's going, uh, what is the situation of the environment, uh, what is, is there people, is, the, is it hot, is it cold, uh, is it moving, is it still, is it fresh, is it uh, polluted, is it... We need sensors, and a lot of electronics uh, for these sensors. Uh, actuators, we need to switch on or off a light, open a door, uh, move a car, uh, or whatever, we need to do something on the environment. It's not just software. Uh, one recent definition about uh, this intelligent environment, they call them, recently in the, in the research, they call them cyber physical systems. So systems that combine cyber parts, so brain thinking, artificial intelligence, and physical. So there needs to be uh, say interfaces with the physical world. Of course, we need uh, some sort of artificial intelligence to come up with uh, proactiveness. Pervasive ubiquitous computing means having devices distributed everywhere. So smartphones or um, small devices, small sensors, battery-operated devices, uh, uh, um, sensor networks, mesh networks, different kinds of technologies to have many small devices around the environment. And human-computer interaction user interfaces, thinking about how the users will use the system. What are the interactions between the system and the user? The system by itself is not complete until you close the loop with user actions. So we need to put together all these kind of technologies to actually build an intelligent environment. And I want to synthesize all this with this diagram, saying that an ambient intelligence, an ambient intelligence system must have any ambient intelligence, any AMI system must have these four main steps. 
A system must be able to sense the environment, to reason about the information that it just got by sensing the environment, to act, act to do some actions on to the environment, so to change the environment in some way, so that the user can feel the change, interact with the environment and or with the system, and then the, in, the interaction with the user will change the environment again, and I, I can sense the change in the environment from the user, and the loops uh, starts again from the beginning. So I have uh, two brains, the brain of the system, right here, and the brain of the human, right there. They do different things, and they exchange information through the environment. The person moves, and this movement are sensed by the system. And so the system will change, I don't know, the lights or the sound of the environment because of the, movie, of the movement of the person. So they will act on the environment, change something, and the user will feel this, this change. It's not just writing on a smartphone or using a, a mobile application. In that kind, the, the interaction we, it is between the device, the software, and the user directly. In ambient intelligence, the interaction is also mediated by the environment. It goes also through the environment. Okay? It's something that we can do today. The technology for sensing and for actuating are very uh, easy and we'll start, we will learn how to use that in the lab. But since the beginning, we need to, to check that all four steps are represented in our system. Otherwise, we don't have a full ambient intelligence system, but we'll have only some par part of it. Huh? There are a lot of work just on sensing or sensor networks. Great. But for doing what? Once I have all this information, huh? we need to go to the user to understand, OK, what, what are we providing to the user? Um, OK, so I want to give you some more details about these four steps. Uh, but I think the first we can stop for 15 minutes or so. Okay.